My guest today is the new bowling sensation of the Indian cricket team. He's also the heartthrob of the country's teeny boppers, which means he is the David Beckham of Indian cricket. But the amazing thing is he's only 19 years old. So what's he like? Well, here is a chance for you to find out for yourself as I introduce you to the one and only Irfan Pathan. Welcome to the program, Irfan. Thank you. Let's start with the tour to Pakistan that made you really famous. Not the one-day games and the test matches, but the trial game in Lahore on the 11th of March. Do you yeah. remember that yeah. first over? I remember that very clearly. Yeah, I, I was bowling first over and uh, Balaji and Zaheer Bull, they were bowling the, with new ball and I was bowling one change. And they all were going for runs and I went, I came. I bowled first ball, I went for second ball, I went before. Then again I went for six. And I, bowl, I didn't bowl well actually. And then uh, apart from that, wicket, wicket was flat. I didn't, uh, uh, I never, uh, Consider any flat wickets. Yes, I was, I was bowling on that wicket. Uh, Imran Naji was playing superbly, and he hit me the six. So he scored me in first for 26 runs. So I didn't forget that over especially. So I, I wasn't bowling that uh, in my full rhythm. As a result, you didn't get to play the first two one days. Were hmm. you very disappointed? Obviously, to play for India, you you have, uh, you you you're dreaming for so many years, and I I got the dream uh, dream true dream come true. Uh, in, uh, in Australia and then after that Pakistan. So I was disappointed a bit, but that's how you got if you, you, you don't perform, you don't, you don't get a chance to play. But you came back with a bang, and in the fifth one day, you had terrific figures, three for 32, and in fact, you only gave away 20 runs in your first eight overs. Were you feeling really charged up that day? Yeah, I was. I was, uh, because last, before the two games, I was bowling pretty well. And I got three wickets and next match two wickets and the last match I got again three wickets. So I was bowling well. I was I was going in confidence, especially to play in Pakistan something different to Australia, because in Pakistan wickets are different. Wickets are flat. You don't get uh, that flat wicket in uh, Australia. You get flat wickets in Asia, especially the subcontinent. So their wickets are very flat, but uh, wickets are very flat. But I was I was going in confidence and I was bowling well. And in fact, your confidence was so great that when it was your turn to bat. You got 20 of 12 balls and three boundaries. Yeah, because uh, Ganguly came to me and just uh, when when I was I was batting up and he told me just if you're going in, just play your natural game and just work out on some runs and just play some shots. So I went there. I was because captain was back on me, so I was just went and I played my shots. Imran said after that fifth one day at Lahore that you should have been the real man of the match. Uh, I never think about uh, man of the match. If you, I'm talking to, uh, I'm talking to you uh, from my heart, and I never think about uh, man of the match because uh, Lakshman, we was Lakshman played uh, superb 100. He scored superb 100, and uh, okay, I bowled well. I got 20 runs, but it's all team game. If he didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't have score 100 runs, we couldn't have, we couldn't have the big score. So Another of well. your great achievements in Pakistan was that you took Yusuf Yohana's wicket five times. Was that luck? Or did you discover a weak spot? Um, it's happened. It's happened uh, while big tours. Have you seen uh, like if you have seen big uh, big tours? It's happened with uh, one bowler getting one batsman regularly out. So if I, it's happened with me and Yusuf Yohana. You're not being modest, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you mean it was just bad luck for Yusuf Yohana? Uh, while he was coming and just I was bowling well and I was swinging the ball well. So luckily and you have to just you have to consider as a batsman a very strong, very weak point. So you, you, you look at it all those all those areas. Okay, tell me what went wrong in the Lahore test. You were there at 49. The whole country was hoping. Your parents were watching and hoping you were going to make 50. Right. Was it nerves? Uh, it's, it's actually all combined, actually. I was just uh, waiting for my 50 as well. But I wasn't looking uh, really to 50. But uh, I don't know what happened. I played actually stupid shot to just nothing shot. And I got out. Bad luck then? Uh, you can say bad luck. But that night you must have been really disappointed. Yeah, I was. I would be. Uh, I would actually more disappointed because I didn't get 50. And uh, if I would have played, I would have scored 50. I had chance to score 100. So I was very really disappointed. And if we could, I could have got 100. So other than you were also playing superbly, he was on 100, and we could have we could have got big score and we could have saved the match. Now before Pakistan, you had a great tour in Australia, where during the one-day series you ended up the highest wicket taker, 16 in all. That must have been thrilling. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's must have been a great achievement for me to so play play my first one day series in Australia and to get uh, highest wicket taker. So I was I was feeling great, but I was still uh, trying to improve. Like uh, I was considering so many runs and five five and a half runs for I had to uh, I had to to take that down. So I was in my mind I was I was feeling very confident, but still have to work on those areas. 
So in other words, you weren't completely satisfied with the Australian performance. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, if you, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't uh, uh, hundred percent satisfied with that tour. But uh, especially for my first tour, I was very happy about that. Your friends say that before you went to Australia, they'd given you a list of Australian batsmen, and you had to get them out. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, actually, my friends were uh, just talking, uh, not not very seriously, but they were talking like uh, you have to get this person out, you have to get this person out. They were just uh, growing my confidence up. But you got all of them out, one by one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I was, yeah, I was bowling well that time. I was seeing the ball there, and uh, my all the senior player and coaches and all the players are giving me confidence. And I was bowling well, and uh, as I was playing one by one match in international, I was growing in confidence. Now, the one moment in Australia, apart from the bowling that everyone talks about is the Damien Martin incident, when you slow hand clapped him. Is it true that before that, he had actually been provoking you and taunting you? Yeah, he was saying, because I never started first, he started first, and he just told me, why are you looking, you, you, you kid, why are you looking at me? So, I was, I was, I was a bit upset, but uh, I know I just had to get them out, because I was playing for my India, uh, my team, India. So I, I had in mind, okay, I don't have to get, uh, carry it away with this, all those things, but I had to get them out, get him out, actually. So then finally I got him out and I was just, it's, it's some, some of those, those days you just carried away by, after the getting away you said something. But I never said, never said to him anything, just I was, cla I was clapping. So yeah, I hope it, it didn't happen uh, again. Do you think you need to control your temper more? Uh, no, uh, no, I'm con controlling a lot, a uh, lot more than what I was playing for uh, in Australia. I'm controlling more and uh, as you've seen in Australia, uh, in Pakistan, and between Australia and Pakistan, I, I'm a bit more, uh, like what you said, a bit more, uh, bit more uh, thinking, thinking bowler, a bit more like uh, just not to do too much of high, uh, not too much of. Uh, so you're in control of yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm quite in control. Of so in a strange way, the Damien Martin incident has helped. Ah, uh, you can say that it helps. It helps. Now That's your right. fans say that although you had a great tour of Australia and a great tour of Pakistan, your greatest moment as a bowler was in the under-19 Asia Cup against Bangladesh. Yeah, definitely. I got nine wickets over there. Uh, for 16 runs? Yeah, for 16 runs. And Bangladesh got out of uh, 34 runs. And in that match, I scored 34 runs as well. <laughs> so <laughs> so single-handedly, uh, you took care of the team. Yeah, actually, you can say that. Uh, but I, knew, uh, and I, was, I didn't knew that guy. I scored, uh, I, I took new nine wickets, and uh, I, I made the world record. When you I didn't know at the time at all? No, I didn't know that. And when I ba went back in the dressing room, Robin Singh was our coach, and he told me, you know that, you, you got world record. So finally, I, I think of that, oh, I got a world record of nine wickets. So I was very happy, and team, all the team members were very happy. You know, that was obviously a moment of great pride. But your coach, Mehendi Sheikh, says that, in fact, the day that he showed the world that he was a classy player happened three years earlier in the under-16 Vijay Merchant Trophy. Yeah, you were badly injured, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, I was. I was badly injured. Uh, I was playing. Uh, I was playing. Uh, I was batting on uh, two runs without helmet. So uh, it, it was against. I remember against Bombay. He only bounced, and I just soaked it, and I just got hurt here. I was. I took. Uh, I got. I know. I got twelve stitches. Inside. Yeah, inside. Inside of that. So I went back, and uh, I seen three, four guys were laughing, and I feel very bad. They are laughing on me because I got injured, and I got like. If you, if in India, it's a very bad thing to get uh, get stuck on the ball on the mouth. So they were laughing me, and so I went back. Then my coach Mandy Sheikh came to me, that uh, look, you are you are Pathan. Just look at, just go in and just do some work for your team, and don't be shy. Don't be like her. <laughs> so I was just. They were charging me up, and all my my brother came to me. He was charging me up. My coach and uh, Satam sir, he came to me. They were, they were always charging me, and then wicket fell. I went I went in, and I scored 72 runs. And then after that, we won that match. I get the feeling that if anyone makes remarks about you or laughs at you, you want to pay them back. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that's how it is. When I, when I started my cricket career till under 14, whenever I played my cricket, all, all my cricket till now, it's, it's, it's all about it. If somebody's giving, uh, somebody's laughing at me, somebody's giving some shit to me, and I always, give, uh, give, I always wanted to give them back. So the lesson is don't mess with your fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like, uh, it's all about it. Now your father says that in fact he really learned his bowling when he was a child and he used to play cricket with his brother Yusuf. Yeah, uh, I used to bowl, uh, I used to, we used to play together, me and my brother. 
we used to enjoy playing cricket uh, even we we were child, we, we were we were 9 8 years old and i used to bowl to him and he and first i used to bat i used to bat maximum 10 to 12 minutes and he will get you out he will get he will get get uh, he used to get me out and after that he used to come to bat oh i said again not again and i used to bowl to him one and one hour one and a half hour. i used to throw it throw through him and bowl to him and yeah it uh, definitely makes me uh, makes me more harder more tougher so that means the real credit for irfan's bowling is Yusuf batting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. If he yeah. hadn't been so good, you wouldn't have had so much practice. No, no, actually. He, he's a such a nice, he's a such a talented player. He needs some luck to get in this cricket. Do you remember still those days when you used to play cricket in your father's mosque? Yeah, I remember. I remember very closely. I never forgot those moments, like me and my brother used to play on, in mosque, and people used to come to me, hey, don't play here, I used to, this mosque, and it's actually true, we can't play in the mosque. So. They'd get angry with you. Yeah, they did. They used to they used to get angry, and we used to just uh, run away, and we used to go to some mall or Kali uh, street and to play te tennis ball cricket. Irfan, let's take a break at that point. I want to come back in part two and talk about your childhood and about the background that created the bowler sitting in front of me. We'll be back in a moment's time. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Face to Face. My guest is the incredible Irfan Pathan. Irfan, let's talk about your childhood. Your father is a muezzin at the Jama Masjid in Baroda. What was it like growing up in a mosque? It's been a, it's been a great actually because in a mosque something uh, life is something different than uh, street and all those areas. It's a really totally different, uh, totally different life what I live live till now. And uh, I grew I grew up there and I leave my till I'm 19 and I. Most of the life I lived, and uh, it's like my my father is quite a religious guy because he he works in mosque and so as I and I used to help him and do some work in mosque to just clean clean the mosque sometime and do azan sometime all those works and it's, uh, it's been a great. You great actually fun. did the azan yourself. Yeah, sometimes because my father whenever he used to do some work he used to go out so I used to do azan. Sometimes. In fact, your father says that sometimes you would even help him sweep the mosque and yeah, I clean do. it. I do. I do. I, I really do. Most of the time, I remember, because if tomorrow is a Friday, so in the day before night, uh, Thursday night, we used to, uh, till now, all used to work, uh, all used to do all uh, work uh, to preparation to Friday's, Friday's prayer. So we used to prepare the mosque before before night, and we used to, do, to help uh, help my father. The mosque is very important to you. Yeah, it is. It's it's very important because all uh, till now I live there and it's uh, I can't imagine to leave leave the mosque and it's very difficult for me to leave all those things. But uh, sometimes you have to think about yourself uh, because if you, if you are playing for country, you have to just need some need some uh, some uh, quietness because it is there. It is there in the mosque. But uh, you know, when I came back from Australia and Pakistan. And uh, the people are coming to coming to mosque, and you can't see people who don't come to mosque, and they're just mobbing me all around because they are happy to, to leave me. Just so I'm just trying to uh, my house to some other way, but uh, definitely I will I will my father will connect to mosque till till he will die, and I know he, I wish my father will live long. And but when you have to move away, will you miss the mosque? Definitely, but uh, I never leave the mosque. But I'll change my house and just I'll come back. Uh, Full day to mosque and just just leave there and just went back to sleep on my other house. You're talking about the penalty that you have to pay because today you have become famous. Yes, yes, I am because I never uh, now really I'm I, I felt very really frankly I never I'm not getting chance to speak to my family properly because people are mobbing me. People want to come over there. You have to come there and you have to attend this function. You have to go there and all sort of things. I have to go there. I have to do some my 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 financial function and all those things and it's uh, it's it's been like uh, because my family matters me more and i'm not giving time to them are you scared that fame is going to change your life and going to change the way you live uh, it has changed till now it has changed a lot actually but not my way of living but it has changed my uh, not it, it's not not fully changed it is not fully changed but halfway through it has changed a lot because uh, uh, the thing is privacy is not it's not there now because you can, in especially in Baroda city because it's not a big big city like Bombay and Delhi, so it's 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 been a small city. So people are very very enthusiastic enthusiastic about me and they are just very happy. They just wanted to meet me. They want my autograph. Are you also worried 
that the little boy that grew up in Baroda, who used to love his life in the mosque, is going to change and will never be the same again? Uh, yeah, I'm a bit scared about that, but uh, it's all about it. It's uh, year to change sometimes. You accept it? Yeah, I accept it. What about being the pin-up boy of the Indian cricket team? Do you like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like that. Yeah, it's, it's really great. Um, people are mobbing you and uh, all those things. Yeah, I like that. What about all the girls chasing you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's been a hard question. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's feel great. Feel great. But uh, you have to think that you have to play cricket. Let's go back to the life you used to lead in the mosque, because many people don't know much about it. The family used to survive on your father's salary of 1,200 rupees and his income from his small shop. Yeah. Were things pretty difficult in those days? If you talk about financially, uh, we were very happy. We were very happy because my father, whatever we want, me and my brother, whatever we want for cricket, they always give to me, especially my uncle Ahmed Mia. He, he helped me a lot. And my, all the coaches in Baroda Sports Club, and even Kiran Mohre, and Bishi Baroda Cricket Association, they helped me a lot. So right? money itself wasn't important? No, it wasn't important because whatever we want, we were very like, we were from childhood, we were a very satisfied person. I was a very satisfied person because I never wanted to, that time I was wanted to just 600 rupees shoes. I never wanted to buy 6,000 6, shoes, what I wear now. I was, so, I was a very satisfied person that time, so we, had never, we never had a problem. This is because of the way your parents brought you up? Yeah, definitely. They had, uh, it's, it's all, all credit goes to them because uh, uh, they teach me all those things, how to live and... and all the credit goes to them. You're very close to your family. As you said, they matter more to you than anything else. Definitely. They matter, they matter a lot, actually. Uh, my father, my mother, and my, definitely my parents, the younger sister. Your father says that the person you're closest to is your sister, Shogosta, and you always get her presence. Yeah, she is. She is very close to me. All my family members, my, my mother, father, my brother, they are very close to me, but my closest is very, uh, my younger sister, because she is young, younger to me. And she's a 13, and yeah, she's, she's very cute, she's very fatty. So, I, yeah, I'm very close to her. Whenever yeah. you come back, you always bring chocolates for her? Yeah, I do. I do. I always bring chocolates uh, for her yeah, because she likes chocolate very much. Uh, so, uh, whenever I go to play cricket anywhere, I just, uh, from, from there, when I, if I'm going to England, if I'm going to Australia, I just bring chocolate for her from there. You said your sister was plump. Your mother says that when his fan was young, he was almost completely round. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was a very fatty guy till two and a half years. As a teenager or an adult? I think still as a teenager because I had to learn a lot in this international arena. Uh, because uh, all the time you play, you're going to get bad times, you're going to get good times, you're going to get great times. So you have to cope, all, you have to cope up with all the times. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I know I'm going to get bad times. So Still, for that, I had to work a lot. And how to cope up with the bad time, I had to just learn from it. And now, because I'm, I'm doing well, uh, I'm, I did well in Australia, I did well in Pakistan. So, but I had to look at all those bad, bad, bad days, that those going to come. So, still, I, I, I think I'm a teenager, I had to learn a lot. How do you ensure that with fame and with stardom, your feet stay on the ground? Uh, it will stay, because what my family background is something different. Something different from any other guy who plays cricket. So I'm sure I'll be there. I'll be, I'll be down to earth. I'll be what I'm, what I am now. Definitely, time gonna change and so many things gonna change. But as a person, I'll be, I'll be same till my death. You're my saying that your life. family won't let you become proud. Yeah, definitely. Because they always, they, whenever they, I call, call to them from Pakistan or from Australia, from everywhere, they will just remind me, be there, be, be, be what you are. They always remind. You mean every time you ring home, your yeah. family remind you, most don't of the time. become proud. Yeah, most of the time. They do, they do help me to, to help in this in this thing. In fact, your mother says that Irfan doesn't like proud people. I don't. I I, I never like proud people, because someone someone, you know, someone putting the proud in between. So I'll be I'll raise my proud proudness high. So I don't like all those. I I don't like proud people. Never. So people who show off annoy you. Yeah, yeah, they do, they do. But sometimes I don't talk to them if uh, I'm. I'm just feeling he's, he's getting his pride in between, proud in between. So I don't, just don't talk to him and just do my work. Do you my know, you work. said a moment ago, you make a good friend. Yeah. Do you also make a bad enemy? Uh, uh, most of them I don't talk much. Most of, if, uh, to be frank, I don't want to be, get so many enemies because you can't leave if you are, getting, if you are making so, so many enemies. So um, 
Sometimes you get you get enemies. But if you don't like someone, you just don't talk to them. Yeah, just don't talk to them and go away. Just do my work, talk to my family. Just keep it out to my talk to my talk to my family. So the little boy from Baroda may become a world star, but in his heart, Baroda will always stay there. Definitely, because Baroda is something very close to my heart. My mosque, my my crown, my school, and all those, whenever I go to Baroda, it's very close to me, very close to me. Baroda is very close to me. Ifan Pathan, a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.